Hello everyone, I have a new card making idea for you today. I'm going to be coloring on a dark cardstock, in this case a black cardstock, and I will be doing a no line coloring. I've been also experimenting with a craft cardstock, gray cardstock, as you can see here. I could not really decide which one to pick, so I posted it on Instagram and here on YouTube and asked you, and the black cardstock got the most votes. I'm using here the Faber Castel Polychromos pencils, but this should work with other brands as well and the exact colors you will find over on my blog. To make the card, first I stamp the image and I'm using this tulip stamp from an older stamp set by Clearly Besotted. Since I'm doing no line coloring, I needed an ink that you will not see. I used the Versamark ink for the stamping, this worked the best for me, but you can use something like Antique Linen Distress ink or similar something that blends well with your pencil colors. The stamping wasn't going well. You can see here that I did not put my cardstock properly into the stamping tool. It was sticking out, which is funny because I had to redo the stamping as this happened with my first try. But luckily it stamped well. You can see here the outline and I didn't have any problem seeing the lines when coloring, but use other ink if you have problems. I was worried though that the ink might dry, that's why I used the stamping tool, just in case if I needed to restamp. But since I placed my cardstock incorrectly, I could not do that anymore. I was trying what is the best to do in this case. First I tried applying a lighter layer of the color across the whole stamped image, or actually only the leaves, then I started coloring the petals as usual, but this was taking too long. And I was again worried that the image will dry, so later I decided to just follow the stamped lines and lightly outline the image using the pencils, which is something I would recommend if you cannot restamp. So let me talk a little bit about the decoloring or how I color. The way I color, I pretty much create an ombre effect. You can use just one color using different shades or use one shade and lighten the color as you go from bottom to top or use different colors like I did here. I used orange at the bottom and at the top I used two yellows, dark and light. The same for the leaves, but I only used two shades, dark and light green. And this gives the image a little bit of depth. When it comes to shading and details, I really do the bare minimum. Because while I love coloring, I don't like spending too much time on it. Since pencil coloring does take more time anyway, I don't want to be making it any longer. So what I do when it comes to the shading, I apply darker shades when I know there would be a shadow, like where the petals are overlapping or at the bottom of the petal, and the same with leaves. Sometimes I bring in an additional darker pencil, often brown or sepia. And when it comes to adding details, which I don't do too often, but here on this image using the orange, I use the details on the stamped image here you can see lines in the middle of the petal, for example, and I added the orange around that place. I also like to do quick strokes with the darker shade and blend it with the lighter shade. It was hardly visible here because of the dark cardstock, but when I color on a white cardstock like the Bristol cardstock, there you can see this. And I work in layers, building up the color. Doesn't matter if I'm using dark or light cardstock. Maybe with the darker cardstock, I do press the pencil a little bit harder if I'm not getting good coverage. When you watch other people coloring, you often hear them saying something about choosing a light source. I hardly ever do that, especially when coloring something like a single image of a flower or a bunch of flowers. It would be different if I were to color a scene, there I would be more likely to choose a light source. With single images, I like to keep it simple, just doing the ombre effect and do some shadows over the leaves and petals are overlapping. So if you are looking for a simple coloring technique, but still want to add some depth, this technique is perfect for that. So I will speed up the video and play some music and show you the rest of the coloring. And I will be back once I'm done. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments.
The coloring is almost done. I really like how it turned out. I was quite surprised as I didn't use any specialty paper for coloring pencils. This is just a plain black paper and I bought it from a Yuki company paper mill direct. I used a stitched rectangular die and I run it through my die cutting machine and next I stamped the greeting. I used another stamp set from Clearly Besotted. I have a lot of stamp sets from them. I used to live in Ireland and it was very easy to buy from them. But you can use whatever greeting you need. I just was searching for a neutral greeting that fits the image. And I picked this just for you sentiment. As I was going to heat emboss it, I first treated the paper with anti-static powder, then I stamped the greeting with the Versamark ink, and I sprinkled a white embossing powder over it, and lastly, to melt the powder, I heat set it with my heat tool. For the card base, I decided to use a craft cardstock. When it comes to the color of the cardstock for card bases, I pretty much only have a white, black, craft, and gray. I adhered the panel on top. Normally I used a simple double-sided tape, but this time I decided to use a foam tape just to have the panel a little bit raised. Lastly for the card, not the video, I thought the card was missing something, so I grabbed some sequins and adhered them across the panel. The sequins I bought years ago from Lucy's Cards, I think that's the name, and I'm not really the best when it comes to adding sequins to my cards. I just never know how much to add, but I think it turned out well. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips. So the card is done. Here you can see it in a detail, but as you saw the thumbnail, there is one more thing in that photo. In my last video, I made my own envelopes. And in that video, I also made envelope inserts or they are also called envelope liners. So I thought it would be fun to make envelope inserts to match today's card. Here is my envelope. I made it myself off camera following the steps in my previous video. I also made a yellow envelope with the insert, but I think it's a little bit too bright. That's why I decided to redo it and use a craft cardstock instead. And the yellow paper I used only for the insert. I first cut the insert in half. I'm using a regular sheet of paper and here I changed one step from my previous video. I first cut the paper to the size of the envelope, leaving just above one centimeter space at the top. That's where the adhesive goes. And then I used my ruler just to make sure both sides are same. I added pencil marks on each side. Then I measured the middle at the top and marked that with my pencil. And then using my paper trimmer, I used those pencil lines as a guide to cut the triangle for the top flap. I wanted also to round the top with my corner rounder, but it did not work. I think the triangle wasn't the right shape. So I just used my scissors. I first cut the top straight and then I rounded each side. To decorate the insert, I started with ink blending. I blended the spiced marmalade distress ink just over the top part of the insert. I thought the yellow of the paper was a little bit too bright and I think the orange brings it down slightly. Plus there is also orange in my coloring of the tulip and I think this way it complements the card very well. Next, I stamped the tulip across the insert just using a black ink. I used an acrylic block for the stamping as it goes a little bit faster. I was a little bit worried I will not get a good impression but all the images stamped very well. I was stamping left and right along the triangle. You can stamp the whole insert, but you don't have to. You just need to cover the visible areas. The stamping is done. I think the pattern looks great inside of the envelope. I also thought it would look nice if I stamped one tulip on the back of the envelope, just in the corner, making sure there's enough space for the addresses, recipient and sender. The next step is to adhere the insert inside of the envelope. Before that, I created the fold first. This way I find it easier to adhere. And I used my ruler and a bone folder to help me with the folding. As I said in my envelope video, it is important that you only add the glue or the tape only at the top fold of the liner. This is because the liner needs to move. If you add glue to both, it won't be able to do so. So the envelope with the liner is done. I think it looks really great. I probably would not make it on a regular basis, maybe just using store-bought envelopes and matching pattern paper just to give some life to plain envelopes. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and will try coloring on a dark cardstock yourself. And if you would like to see another video where I colored with pencils, just click on the video at the top. There I colored with the Prisma pencils. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will be back very soon with another crafty video.